So here I'm going to show you to find z to the fourth equals negative 16. So all of the fourth roots, in other words, of negative 16. So here you just take the fourth root on both sides. So it basically isolates the z giving you on the right side negative 16 raised to the one fourth. Write the negative 16 as 16 times negative 1 to the one fourth. Distribute that one fourth to each factor individually, getting 16 to the one fourth times negative 1 to the one fourth. Basic property of exponents, you can do that. Then 16 to the one fourth is positive 2. So that's done. That's it. You can't make it simpler than that. But that negative 1 to the one fourth is a whole world onto itself. So it's negative 1 raised to the one fourth. I'm going to be write that negative 1 specifically as negative 1 plus 0 times i to the one fourth because that negative 1 plus 0 times i has the shape of a complex number, you see? Now, here's a key observation to making the rest of it work, which is that this negative 1, basically, you do from doing the cosine of some angle, and that 0 you also do get from doing the sine of some angle. So here in this picture below me, you see the following, that at pi radians are 180 degrees, either one is fine, essentially. You have negative 1, that's the x-coordinate, that's that negative 1 above my head. That zero that you see in that position, that's the y-coordinate at that pi radian or 180 degree angle. That's the zero in front of the i. So I can take that negative 1 plus 0 i and I can write that initially as cosine of pi plus i sine of pi for that reason. I'm going to continue up top. Take a look up here. I'm going to be right negative 1 as cosine pi and 0 as sine of pi. After that, I'm going to take the next step, which might seem a bit arbitrary, but it's not. I'll explain it. You're going to do pi plus k times 2 pi, both in a cosine and a sine. What is the reason for that? So the reason is this. When you are right here, say, at uh, pi radians or 180 degrees, if you spin all the way around 2 pi, it's going to bring you back to that same value. If you spin again all the way around, it's going to bring you back to that same location, you see? So for that reason, when you do this, to find all of the roots correctly and accurately, you can't just have pi by itself. You've got to have that plus k times 2 pi in both the sine and the cosine functions. That one-fourth, on the other hand, that stays as written. All right, make sure, also, make sure also you have i attached to the sine part. Then I'm going to convert that into exponential notation because it's much simpler. So this will become this now. 2 times e raised to the pi plus k times 2 pi times the one-fourth times i. Now one fourth is coming from up there. You see, it's one fourth up there. Okay, good. So then I'm going to take that one fourth. I'm going to distribute it to the pi and the k times two pi individually using the distributive property. Nothing else. This is going to give me now pi over four for that reason plus k times two pi over four i. Now that part, that's the two over four. You can simplify that. So it's going to become a one half in that position. So now it's two times e to the pi over four plus k times one half pi with the i on the outside. The rest of it, in order to simplify the process, I don't have to deal with pies and fractions of a pi, which are really complicated to deal with. I'm going to convert into fraction mode. So instead of using pi over 4, I'm going to use 45 degrees. Instead of using 1 half pi, which is 90 degrees, I'm going to put that down as 90 degrees. So it's equivalently written as 45 plus k times 90 now in a simplified form. And this is going to happen for k goes from 0 to 3. There are four of these values. Remember, we're finding the fourth root. You don't want to go to k equals 4, because that would then correspond to the same location as a root as k equals 0. Notice there are four values, and we have to find the fourth root. So you need four values in the list. If you put a k equals 4 in there, that would give you five values, and that fifth one would be bringing you back to the same position as k equals 0. So don't put four in there, just zero to three. In general, it's not zero to n, but zero to n minus one, okay? Where n is like, for example, the root that you're finding. Like in my case, n is four, you see? In your case, it could be eight. Hopefully not, because that would take forever, but <laughs> good idea. Let's move on. So let's go with the first stage. So set k equal to zero. So z equals two times e to the 45 plus zero times 90. That's the same as just doing Two, ta two times the cosine of 45 plus two times the sine of 45, according to the unit circle, at 45 degrees or pi over 4 radians, if you like. The x is the root of 2 over 2, that's the cosine part, and the y is the root of 2 over 2, that's the sine part. So you can make replacements. Cosine of that value is now 2 times the root of 2 over 2. Sine of 45 is now 2 times the root of 2 over 2, just replacing with the, from the unit circle. Now notice that this cancels, right? Like this one cancels with this one, leaving only that root of 2 in the bottom, and then like this one here cancels with this one, leaving only the root of 2 
So the first root then has this shape right here. This one. Z equals the root of 2 plus the root of 2i. Let's continue on to the next stage. So now imagine you set k equal to 1. So it's going to look like this. 2 times e to the 45 plus 1 times 90. Now 45 plus 1 times 90 is just 45 plus 90. That's 135 degrees. So it's going to look like 2 times cosine of 135 plus 2 sine of 135i. So if you look at the unit circle on the side here, at 135 degrees, or equivalently 3 pi over 4 radians, you have the x-coordinate negative root 2 over 2, y-coordinate positive root 2 over 2. So you can make replacements. Cosine of 135 you replace with negative root of 2 over 2, and the sine of 135 you replace, therefore, with the root of 2 over 2. As before, like this 2 will cancel with that 2, will cancel with that 2, and then this 2 will cancel with that 2, leaving the root of 2 positive in that position, the i, and the negative root 2 in that position. So that's our next root, right here. When k has the value 2, that corresponds to 2 times e to the 45 plus 2 times 90. So 45 plus 2 times 90, that's 225. So that corresponds to this angle right here, 225 degree angle, or 5 pi over 4 radians if you like. There the x coordinate is negative root 2 over 2, the y coordinate is also negative root 2 over 2. So you plug those in, so it's going to give you 2 times the cosine of 225 plus 2 times the sine of 225i. Well, you replace cosine of 225 with the negative root 2 over 2. Replace sine of 225 with negative root 2 over 2 also. As before, I cancel, okay, cancel this denominator with that. And then also on this side, cancel this quantity with that one. One is in the top, one is in the bottom. You can do that. And that's going to give us negative root 2 minus root 2i as the next root in this position. Continue. Set k equal to 3 at the last step. So you'll have z equals 2 times e to the 45 plus 3 times 90i. 3 times 90 is plus the 45 altogether 315 degrees. So that's going to be equivalent to 2 times e to the 315 times i. Go back down. So it's 2 times cosine of 315 plus 2 times sine of 315i. But now in a unit circle, 315 degrees is 7 pi over 4 radians. So you have the root of 2 over 2, a negative root of 2 over 2. Keep those in mind. So back here, replace cosine of 315 with positive root 2 over 2 times that 2. Replace sine of 315 with negative root 2 over 2 times that positive 2. And then simplify. So as before, uh, this 2 will cancel with that 2, leaving root of 2. This 2, will, this 2 right here will cancel with that 2 leaving negative root 2 in this position. So this then is the last and fourth root. So to summarize everything, it looks as shown here. These are the four roots. If we need to pause the video, look through them. I deliberately chose to do the video this way instead of trying to like write it out by hand because this is a lot. And this way, is, I think, is better organized anyway. The only thing I would say at this point is that the following is true. If you look through these roots and you mark them, Notice that there are four of them, and they basically would make the vertices of a square. You can do that if you want. I'm just going to leave it though. This is a numerical answer. What you don't want to do is the following. Take a look. As a reminder, okay, do not set k equal to 4. Because then, that would be like doing it this way, essentially. It would be giving you 0 equals e, rather 2, times e raised to the... Okay, so here I have to be really careful. It's going to be... Within parentheses, 45 plus 4 times 90 times the i. So that's if you're setting k equal to 4. So look, it's going to be 45 plus 4 times 90. Work that out. But you see, that's giving a 40, 405 degree angle, but that's more than 360 degrees. So if you then you would have to do this. You would have to take 4 of 5 and subtract from it 360 to get 45 degrees. But remember that we already have 45 degrees. That was the first thing that we did. So you don't have to. In other words, the note is this. Okay? Don't go to 4. Only k equals 3 is enough to generate all four of the unique roots. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.